Hi, Justin from the Entertainment Outlet. I'm here with Ryan Sharp. We're here with Edema in Providence. Uh, so Ryan, how did you end up with Edema? Uh, well, we've been friends for the better part of 30 years. And, uh, you know, Dave Daru and I um, actually they started our first band together with Jonathan Davis called Sex Art, yeah. which led to songs like Blind and Daddy, which no one knows, and Corn. And uh, Jonathan came back and signed my band Orchard, which uh, which did really well. And uh, it was just a really interesting thing that Dave found himself in a band with John's little brother, Marky, and Tim Flucky and all these guys that became Edema. And so we've always been sort of part of the original nucleus behind this whole new metal movement and you know Edema was at the time they were a little bit younger than me they were big fans of what I did in Orgy and you can hear it in their guitar playing and the kind of synth sounding about the things that I think are really melodic about them that make them sound modern and so for me it was just a really it was a band that I loved it was a band of my friends it was a band from my hometown we're all from Bakersfield and it you know looking at it after the fact it was a really good fit um, I never really intended on being in the band. I was actually on the phone with all of them and Marky trying to get the band back together and trying to get Marky to go out on some of these tours that we keep getting offered. And I, it took me um, you know, a couple of hours of wasted time on the phone to find out that Marky was not someone that was sensible or that cared about the fans or that cares about the band, doesn't care about anything. And I was just shocked, you know, and I just couldn't believe it because it's every musician's dream to be able to rock and do tours like this and do what we do. And, and, you know, we actually get paid to do what we do. And in music, it's not easy to get paid. And uh, that just makes it so amazing. You get paid when people care, you know. And I'm telling Marky this, I'm like, people like your music, I like your music. You know, and if you guys you know, do these tours, you can make money and then you use money to turn into food continue to live. I'm like, I don't understand what's going on here. And they can open, or, or, or excuse me, not open it necessarily have that in mind, but they can play with Julian K, because Julian K is touring all over the world. I'm like, Edema would be a boss, and I could be out with my friends. And so it fell apart, and I realized that Marky wasn't going to do it. And I called Edema, and I told them, you know, it's this is not going to it's not happen, I'm sorry. And then I moved on, and I did okay, okay. Well, Edema kept getting on tour offers because they're a popular band. They sold a million albums. And when you sold a million albums, people want you to play for the rest of your life, pretty much. And uh, Chris Colt called me, uh, and uh, he just nodded the blue. And he's all, you know, get off of a really good tour. I'm like, so sorry. I'm really sorry. I felt so bad. So, well, would you do it? I go, well, Julian K. I'm like, we're already going to be on the He's like, no, 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 will you sing? And I was like, I've never fun of I've only sang in my own original projects. I've always been the guy in my fucking world. You know? And uh, I talked to Amir, and uh, he said, well, do you like the music? I said, yeah. He's like, do you sound good singing the music? I don't know. So I drove back home to Bakersfield, and did a rehearsal with the guys, and there were some friends around and stuff, and everyone was kind of chills on their arm. They're like, this works. And someone said it sounded like if Trent Reznor was singing for a team. I kind of had this like little bit of my voice mixed in with what they do, but the, the feels were there, the right things were there. And so I came back and, and I go, you know, it sounds good. It was really fun. I liked being in more of a rock band as opposed to Julian K, where it's me and here. You know, and we have a band, and we have people we collaborate with, but let's be honest, it's largely the new place to be in here. Um, and you can, you know, if we wanted to do this, we could hit knocking tracks and play, and it would be true. Okay, you know, we don't do that. But um, it was nice to be in a whole of guys that were all top level guys that have played for, you know, at the biggest level for, for the last 20 years. You know, it was fun for me. And they're a demon. It sounds like a demon, and they rock, and it's, it's just huge. So I had good feels. And then Mirror's like, yeah, I don't mind if you do it, as long as I can produce the album. And I was like, yeah, I wouldn't have any other way. And by the way, I'm not doing it now. I'm just going to do the tour. So um, Amir's like, well, I'm going to come with you. So um, we did the tour, and it went really, really well. And that was just you know before COVID. And we were all blown away. And Amir was like, yeah, I think that we sound good with them. And uh, we started working on some music. And uh, then it just started becoming very real. And I decided that we would actually continue to make music and tour. We came up with a new song, Ready to Die, as well as like seven other songs, but Ready to Die just became like, I would say, this sounds like the 
this sounds like the edema everyone loves. This sounds like the edema that I love, but with me singing. And it's very convincing. And I'm like, this should be our lead track. And we should release this first. And uh, so we made a video, uh, which was sort of like me kind of reintroducing the band in a completely non egotistical completely um, just organic way. You know, just kind of like, we literally just set up here and play. Right, but we captured the feeling of a demon in the video, and the song's been streamed like 170,000 fucking times in just over two weeks. The video is going to hit 100,000 uh, views, um, and this is without a major label. This is on my label. You know, we're pretty good, um, but you know, we're not. We don't have like big staff. You have know, Ryan Chuck, the, the man of the machine. You know, so um, and then a great song with a great band. You know, and uh, the fans are acting. I mean, it's, it certainly seems like a perfect fit. You know, yeah. when when the announcement was made, I was just like, wow, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Like, it's, it seems like a good fit, yeah. and and the song sounds great. Yeah. I mean, like you said, it's, it sounds like a demo. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm looking really forward to yeah. hearing, hearing it live. Yeah. The other songs with them as well. Yeah. Um, Voice permitting. <laughs> um, so I'm excited that this has worked out. You guys are going to keep doing this. Um, so, so the new songs, you're involved in the writing with them? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. I mean, even more so, because I'm a producer as well. I'm not taking the producer role, although I probably will get, like, maybe I take a producer point on the album. Uh, when, when it becomes an album, our strategy is different as well. But I'm very, very much, um, like if I wasn't the singer of a band, I'd probably be a professional marketing person or a... I'm kind of a business guy, really, but I'm a branding guy. I'm a story guy, you know, and then I just figure out how to make that into a business. And um, I'm very involved with the songwriting in that everything that we do has to tell the story of who a demo really is. It has to tell the story of Bakersfield. It has to have that angst in it. You have to look at album one and two and not after it kind of took detours left and right and didn't evolve more. Like we have to take, we have to start there and we have to continue to tell that story like in a modern way. And in that way, there is a bit of a producer, you know, doing that. There is a bit of an oversight over the entire, you know, umbrella of the product of the demon. And that's definitely my role. Um, and that's cool. And they all, they all love it. They all accept it. And I think they understand it. I think they were looking for someone from the outside maybe even to come in and say, what you guys do is good. You don't need to change this stuff. All you need to do is show people who you are now and remember why people love you. And that's it. And I, I, it's fun for me because I remember why I love it that every night because I get to fucking play it. You know, but I think when you're in the band, you forget. You know, I think Orgy forgot it. I mean, I think Jake Gordon doesn't remember what made Orgy Orgy. You know, listen to the new music. You know, I'm not even talking shit. I'm just saying you have to remember who you are. You know, you have to. We're in a codependent relationship. Uh, we're in a codependent relationship with our fans, and you have to remember that. You have to respect it. You have to make music not just for you, but for both of you. You know, and I think that that's where bands get lost. I think the Dima is going directly down the path of making music with their fans. You know, and that's why I think it's important. Yeah, I think that's an important thing to remember. You know, I certainly when I saw it perform with Julian Kane a couple years ago, I could feel that from the band's performance. Yeah. That, you know, you really care about the fans. That yeah, 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 yeah. So I think that's a good thing, a good matters. mentality to have. Um, so what is it like touring now with, with the world the way it is? It's different. Um, I mean, this is one of the first conversations I've had without a mask on the entire tour. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, since the Delta variant has hit, it's affected everything. It's affected sales. It's affected. Um, I mean, it's really a lot of bands are canceling, so fans feel like they can't buy a ticket in advance, which ends up kind of translating into they end up just not coming. Um, we have fans tell us every night that they, you know, would have come with a bigger group of friends, but none of the friends wanted to come because so. I mean, not because of us, but yeah. just they just don't want to go outside. And um, you know, it's 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 a gamble. It's dangerous. I mean, we're all vaccinated. But you can still get sick, and if we get sick, it ends the tour. And that's why I'm careful. You know, I'm not really scared of getting it because um, everyone that I know has had it now, and it's really bad. But um, you know, if you're vaccinated, you don't die. Um, if you aren't vaccinated, like many of my friends, you did die, and or you spent three weeks in the hospital. You know, when I left, my girlfriend had it. 
I mean, it's crazy. Uh, my other bandmates uh, played a show uh, in San Diego that I was supposed to go to, and I, and I decided not to go. And San Diego's all of our fans are. We had uh, 30 people come in. Yeah, so it's just like to think that this isn't running ravaging the industry. It is. I, I think there was a window there. If we would have been out two months earlier, I think we probably would have done really good because everyone thought it was over, right? Well, I mean, no, it's not over. So I think until the vaccination rates go up, I think it's going to be tough. You know, until really the numbers start really going down. But, you know, not to get political or anything because I don't care about that side of it. Um, but it is crazy that, you know, there's a way to um, protect yourself from this. And there's a lot of people that just don't want to do it. It's just weird to me. And it's an FDA-approved way, and it's not too different than any other vaccines that we've had. And most of us have done cocaine and other shit, so it's like, I just don't understand. Why not just get rid of this thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why don't we just beat it and go back to concerts, right? So. Well, we're certainly glad that you guys have stayed healthy. We're glad you're here tonight. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to kill your voice too much before the show. I appreciate that. Thanks for taking a couple minutes. I'm very I hope the rest of the tour goes smooth. Look forward to hearing more new songs. Thank you so much for your baby stuff here. Thank you. <laughs>